Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, because I need to get my fall items uh, replenished, I'm, this today's video is going to be on some different ways to make pumpkins. And uh, this particular one is just a, a small book that's thick enough that it will stand. So you could actually use a large book if you wanted. Uh, the biggest thing is it just needs to be thick enough that it will stand on its own. And so all I did with this book, and it was brown, so that helped me. I could just kind of uh, paint it in this color of orange, which is a color that I've mixed. Here I'm taking a little strip of fabric, and I'm gluing it to the inside of the front cover, and then I'll glue it to the inside of the back cover and that will keep it closed so that it doesn't try to open when it's standing and then I'll be able to um, glue my stick on it uh, but like I said this was a brown book so I could just paint one coat and I didn't worry with full coverage because I wanted a distressed look and I even went back with some sandpaper and did some extra distressing around the edges and now all I'm gluing all I'm doing is gluing this little piece of stick to the top and that makes a little pumpkin and then I'm just going to take some strips of fabric that I've uh, torn up and this is a little piece of green burlap and I'm just going to fold that and cut out the shape of a leaf, but I'm gonna leave uh, leave it together at the bottom uh, so that the two leaves are connected, but it goes in there at the bottom. And you'll see as I open it up there. So that makes two leaves, and uh, you don't have to be real careful with the shape of the leaves, just as long as it looks like it could be a leaf. Uh, and then I'm uh, just going to glue that to the top of this little book and, and then tie these little strips of fabric. And I've got like three or four that I've just kind of ripped up. And I think I put some jute twine in that also and just tied that around the top. And that makes a neat little pumpkin. Now you could do different sizes and make a set here, but I feel like this is just a very, very simple pumpkin and um if you don't have wood and items like that then most people have access to books so here i've taken a few blocks and these i had just um, started to make other things with and uh, now i'm just repainting them so uh, i'm i'm uh, painting this in the color cotton uh, no, actually, I think this was the color Buttercream, and that's a Dixie Belle color. And again, I'm not worried with full coverage because uh, I'm going to be uh, doing some more, uh, more colors on this, so uh, it'll cover well. So I just give these blocks uh, a coat of this Buttercream. I don't bother painting the bottom because it's just the raw wood and it's just going to be sitting on that area. It won't show. And here's another one that actually I think my daughter had started to paint and she messed up on it and and just gave up on it. And so I'm just repainting that. And now for this one, uh, I'm painting this orange color over the top and again I don't know what color this is I've just kind of mixed up some colors because I didn't want uh, a bright orange I wanted it more of a muted orange and so I'm just doing kind of a haphazard coat on it because I, I don't want full coverage now with this one I'm added some adding some of the color burlap to this one that's also a Dixie Belle color and you could use any tan uh, but i'm just kind of adding a little bit of this color i still want this pumpkin to be white but i don't want it to be just plain white and now i'm adding some of the color cotton to add yet another layer of color uh, pumpkins are not uh, solid colors i don't think and uh, this just kind of makes it uh, it just gives it more dimension and has a lot better look and so once these this dries or these all dry 
then I'm just going to go back and uh, heavily distress them anyway. And I, when I sand around the edges, I do extra sanding just to kind of round them off somewhat. I, I want those corners more, more rounded off. Uh, they're still going to be square, but it just gives them a better look if you if you uh, make sure that you spe pay special attention when you sand those corners and edges. And now with these, all that I'm doing is gluing these to the top. Now, I didn't mention that I glued uh, the book. I just used hot glue on it because I knew it would hold good to those pages or hold well to those pages. But with these, I'm having to use... Uh, both Gorilla Glue and hot glue uh, so that I have that immediate hold but then it will also uh, be a permanent hold and now I'm just ripping up some fabric here and this is just uh, black and white gingham uh, and then I do some strips of um, a coffee stain tea towel and just different little strips my, my color combination here that I want is the black and white on top of these pumpkins because I want to give them kind of a farmhouse look so um, as long as I stick to those colors I don't like to do strips of just straight black uh, because I feel like that's too harsh but always when I'm adding black in I just uh, use the black and white together and I'm just making three little piles here. And for the small pumpkin, I'm, I'm doing a smaller uh, bow. And this is just going to be a little um, shabby bow. And I'm just going to take some strips of fabric and tie them together with some jute twine. And then that will be my, my bow. This is the simplest bow that you can do, I think. So I do the same with all three of these. I just kind of double knot that jute twine and, and then uh, glue it to the top of the pumpkin. And uh, these are just really, really simple pumpkins. And um, if, if you have a hard time with the saw uh, and, or you don't have a saw, uh, then you can get these little blocks of wood uh, at construction sites where they're building new houses. And most of the time, they'll just throw them outside. And if you ask, uh, they'll just let you have them because they're going to have to haul them off anyway. And a lot of times you have little sections like this that are already cut for you. Um, and here I want different sizes. I don't want them all the same because I'm going to sell this as a set. And some people have asked me to name uh, my prices, and I'm, I'm going to do that occasionally. I don't like to do that often because I find that prices vary so much but from place to place. But uh, I'll probably put about 18 on these, and um, I don't have anything in this wood because I did get mine uh, free. And this has taken very little time to make. Now you could easily sell them separate, I'm sure, uh, but I just, I think that they go well together as a set, and I, I want to keep them as a set. And I'm just gluing these on the top here with hot glue because I don't feel like I need the Gorilla Glue in this case. And when I glue that on, I, I glue it both to the stem and the top of the pumpkin, and that just kind of helps hold, hold that stem even more until that Gorilla Glue uh, dries well. I hope this is not early, too early for you guys to start the fall decor, but I mentioned before that I'm going to have to kind of work this in here and there, but I, I'm, I was thinking today that I'm really getting behind on my fall decor, so I really want to get some, so I'm going to be probably doing a little more fall decor in my videos. These are really easy to mass produce because you can just take a lot of blocks and paint them all. And I tend to paint them all white first or some sort of white first and then add my color on top of that. I feel like it gives it a better look. And there they are as a set. I think they work real well as a set. And I really think things display well in sets of three. Now this is just a little piece of Luan. And I guess you could use anything here. You could use just a little uh, square from a uh, fencing board. 
but I'm making this with tiered trays in mind. So I'm just kind of making a little miniature painting that you could add to your uh, tiered trays. And I'm just kind of giving this a little bit of a finish so that it has a little more dimension. I used the buttercream as a base coat. And now uh, I'm just taking my ink pad in the color olive green and just kind of brushing it across just to add some uh, just to add some interest to the background. And then I thought I wanted to uh, tone that green down a little bit. So I'm using uh, just a brown wax and this is the Krylon wax. Uh, I use Dixie Belle a lot, but I just happen to have this Krylon and uh, I'm just kind of antiquing that background so that I have a good base. Now here I am just freehanding a pumpkin. Now you could take a pencil and just kind of pencil it in first if you wanted. I feel like everyone can draw a pumpkin. Uh, and, and the main reason I say that is because pumpkins don't have to be perfect. And actually the more imperfect they are, the better they look. So I just take, this is, uh, this is just a um, apple barrel color. It's a, a, an acrylic craft paint. And um, I always like to use a dark color first because then I feel like that gives it some dimension when I go, when I do my color, it has some shadowing. Uh, a lot of people are different, but that's just how I like to do it. And all I'm doing is just uh, drawing little sections here. Now you could start with a circle first and then just kind of fill in your sections, but this just works for me. And I paint a lot of pumpkins and I used to paint um, a lot of paintings, but they tend to be more time consuming. So I've kind of gotten away from painting so much, but I still paint these pumpkins because they're very quick and they sell well. And I, I even take larger pieces of wood and, and do uh, larger paintings uh, in pumpkins. But here I'm just, uh, like I said, I'm just kind of drawing these sections. And like I said, the more imperfect, the better. Uh, because I, I've never seen a pumpkin that is exactly round or uh, perfect in any way. So, um, this, if you, if you've never tried to paint, I think that, uh, pumpkins are the perfect, uh, practice. And although I'm not one of them, some people decorate a tree for every holiday. And I sell a lot of these where I just drill out, uh, little holes in the top and put a hanger on it. And, um... They sell well for their um, for their fall tree. Okay, so now this doesn't look like much. This is just the base coat here. So now I'm adding in uh, some color. And uh, right now I'm just kind of putting little touches of green. It doesn't matter what green you use. I just think uh, adding some dimension and color helps. And I didn't add much green to that. Uh, because this pumpkin is going to be orange and it's that same color that I mixed before and like I said I really like this muted orange. You can take an orange and uh, a brighter orange and just a touch of brown and then and then some white and you'll come up with this color or different shades of this color. So here I am adding a little bit of green to that stem. So because the stem also needs some dimension and a lot of the stems are not quite uh, dried out yet. And so you'll find greens in the stems. And then I add some lighter into my brown and uh, just kind of add maybe some gray and a, um, a, a lighter brown. And you want that stem to have some dimension also. And then I even add some uh, white into it and get little highlights on it. And it's very easy to make it look like that stem is twisted and, and it just gives it a lot more realistic look. 
I like to make sure I get that uh, stem right before I for before I really paint the pumpkin because you want that stem to kind of be behind. So now I'm just adding this orange and I'm not doing full coverage. I'm not worried about full coverage and I don't want for full coverage uh, because I want those that brown showing some behind because it gives some dimension to your pumpkin. And so when you're painting, just make sure that you don't hide you don't want to leave a, an obvious section of brown between your um, between your sections, but you you want to leave somewhat of a shading between it. You don't want to paint up so close that you don't even see that shade and the difference in the sections because that's what's going to make this pumpkin look a lot more realistic. If you accidentally uh, cover too much then you can always go back and add some in and that's the fun thing of painting these pumpkins is just adding layers of color and when I'm doing an actual painting uh, I add lots of layers of color but when you're painting on such a small scale as this uh, it really doesn't take much at all and I'm slowing this painting down I I actually paint these even faster than this uh, because you you just don't have to be careful at all so uh, but I'm I'm doing this slow enough that you can see the steps but like I said I'm adding the orange in and then here and there I add just a little bit of green and um, and give it some dimension because uh, no orange pumpkins are just straight orange. If you'll look closely, all pumpkins have some extra colors in them. And now I'm taking some white and adding some highlights. Uh, so you want to highlight just around the edge and around the top. Uh, you don't want it to be an extreme highlight. And if you get too much, you can always just kind of... Uh, just kind of blend it down in or add some more of your orange back but uh, you do want to make sure you see it well because if you don't see it well then you're not going to notice it at all when your pumpkin dries and like I said if it if it dries with too much white you can always cover over it but you you want those highlights to show well because if you don't uh, then it doesn't give your pumpkin the dimension that it needs to make it look uh, realistic. So just kind of play with it. And, and these little small paintings like this are perfect for that because you can do them really quickly. And uh, if you mess up, you just keep going back over it until you get the way you want. And this particular painting doesn't take much color, just whatever color you're going to paint on that background. And then for the pumpkin itself, I just used this orange that I mixed, and I think I used some um, burnt umber for that dark brown, and then I think that green was was the color thicket, and then some white. And so, you know, you're just using about four or five colors here, so you don't have to go buy a lot of paint. Uh, just just buy those basic little colors and uh, I don't know what they are at Walmart right now because I haven't bought them in a while but last year they were about 50 cents for that little small thing of paint so you know just get four or five of those and practice and if you don't have boards at all just cut you a piece of cardboard or a piece of that um, the harder thicker, um, I don't know what it's made of, some, those foam boards uh, that are poster boards. And you could cut those up and use those. So there's really a number of things that you can make these with. And there are all the little pumpkins finished. And as you can see there, it gives it so much dimension. It really didn't take much time even slowing it down. And then there's my little sets of pumpkins. And like I said, if you don't have blocks, you know, most people can uh, can find a book that will work so just go to the thrift store and buy a book or check out some books that you no longer want but 
I lucked up that that one was brown, but it wouldn't have to be. You just do a little extra painting. I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.